and were down to two. And Meltzer would say, while the crowd was more for Batista, they didn't boo Cena. That wasn't a risk worth taking. And here's why we're all here. Meltzer would write, in actuality, the Royal Rumble finish was botched. John Cena was simply supposed to escape from the power bomb the first time, but later get power bombed and thrown over the top clean. Instead, they both lost balance and tumbled over the top rope. The referees had no idea what to do. And Vince McMahon was in the back on the headsets, basically directing everything that happened. At first, the referees raised Batista's hand as the winner, as was planned. When it became clear that Batista actually hit the ground first, Vince ordered the referees to do the tie finish with the SmackDown referees calling it for Cena and the raw referees calling for Batista. He then said he was coming out and that explains why no music was cued for Vince. So let's walk through the first part is, is the way he broke it down pretty much the way you remember it was supposed to be two power bombs. The second one goes out clean and they just lost their balance. And here we are. Well, Cena was supposed to supposed to go out. I don't remember all the machinations up to it, other than John was John was slated to go out um, by Batista at the end, and they just both went over at the same time. Uh, what goes on at um, Gorilla when they tumble over? Well, fuck. That's what goes on. Um, you know, it's like okay, uh, let's see who hit. Maybe, maybe Cena hit first, therefore Batista wins and you're good to go. And I think Dave hit first. So it was like, okay, well, can the argument be made that they hit at the same time? And all this is happening in a matter of seconds. It's not like, okay, stop everything down. Now let's figure out what to do. You're, you're, you're trying to figure out as you go. And, um, it's like, okay, tell the SmackDown guy to raise, John's hand till the raw guy to raise Batista's hand. We got, you know, and we're thinking, okay, shit, maybe we can get to a match or, you know what, just start it over. <laughs> and before you know it, Vince is out and Vince is headed down to the ring to figure it out. And I, I don't know that we necessarily had exactly what we wanted to do uh, before Vince went out because Vince just bolted out and went to the ring. And then when he slid in the ring, uh, nobody could figure out why the hell he, he didn't get up. He just sat on the, on the damn so, mat. So you couldn't tell right Screen away that everybody. he had banged himself. What's that? You couldn't tell right away on the monitor that he had hit his leg getting in, right? No, we, yeah, we didn't. I don't remember seeing him slide in. Awesome. You know, again, we're trying to do a million different things and talk to a million different people, trying to figure out what to do. And you look up and Vince is sitting on the, on the apron, yelling at everybody. And it's like, okay, what the hell's going on here? And we restarted the match and got our finish. Meltzer says instead, after far too long period of indecisiveness, Vince McMahon came to the ring doing the Vince walk. As Vince tried to slide in the ring, like a wrestler, he didn't get high enough and smashed his right knee on the apron. As he tried to recover, he climbed through the ropes, took a step on his right leg and collapsed while sitting down, unable to get up. He started pantomiming about what to do. The show was way over time by this point, as they had been shaving time throughout the Royal rumble because the undercard had already went long while trying to explain and unable to stand Cena and Batista threw each other once over the top. By the time it was restarted, the show had run way too long. And the two had to simply have Batista power bomb Cena and throw him out in 16 seconds, making for a weak ending, particularly as it regarded Cena, who was scheduled to face JBL for the SmackDown title. And this clearly made him a secondary challenger and that a secondary title match. So you're seeing Vince sitting in the ring, panic is setting in. And listen, we've discussed everything that's happening and going on and I know that they've got to just come up with something on the fly, but what the hell happens when Vince walks back through the curtain? Uh, you know, Vince just, just came back and the fact that, you know, he walked and nobody knew, nobody knew what happened at all. You know, it, it's, we're doing our thing and it's before you know it, um, 
match starts, we get our finish, we, we go home and, and Vince came back and sat down and, um, trainer came over to talk to him and everybody gave him his privacy and left. I mean, that's it. You know, there was no, there was no big dramatics or anything like that, uh, at that point. And he was obviously hurt. Right. We, we could see that he was hurt, but nobody knew how he got hurt. No one knew really what the injury was. We thought he like blew out his knee or something. You know, maybe sliding into the ring. He hit the edge of the ring and maybe blew his knee out somehow. Um, but, you know, they asked for privacy and we all left. So no one knew what his injury was, how bad his injury was, or even how the injury happened. You know, didn't know that till, God, long after the fact. So it was just kind of a... Okay, well, Vince banged his knee. They'll get him back there and take a look at him, and uh, and let's let's go. Got to go to Japan in the morning. The word that is, as we've always heard, is as he's trying to no sell it, he winds up putting more pressure on the other leg, fucks up that leg even worse somehow. And I think you've told us a story before that you could actually, you know. I know. It's yeah. Pain. I mean, I heard a guttural scream, but again, it, it was, I think Vince, you know, look, he, he walked back from the ring, right. Which is in and of itself is, is a miracle and, <laughs> and, then, and foolish, right? I mean, good Lord yeah, and foolish. Yeah. Uh, but you know, when he, when he came back and, uh, got down the stairs I, and again, I, I didn't see it. I don't think anybody saw it. Right. Um, except for probably the doctor and the trainer that was with him. But I remember being, down the hall near his office um, and heard just this horrific, like, how, like, ha, you know, and, and it was like, what the fuck was that? Right. And, you know, trying to, trying to walk and trying to get back. I think that he just, he, all that pressure on the other leg that that one went. And so now, you know, he, he had pulled, um, well, both his squads and shit was on, but uh, you know, we didn't even know that, you know, nobody really knew until much later, you know, in the evening, the, the extent of his injuries. And really at that point, all we knew was that, Hey, he's going to go and, uh, have this, have this looked at and probably going to have to have some surgery. So he's not going to go to Japan and, uh, you guys have a good trip. So nobody knew until long after the fact, uh, that he, he had torn both quads and was, uh, in a great deal of pain because everybody's like, he was walking, you know, cause you, <laughs> I don't ever want to experience it myself, but I can only imagine, you know, trying to, trying to do that. I doubt I'd be able to walk. Meltzer would say, and what may be the most important story, McMahon's noticeable aging has become concerning. It was never something talked about. And now barely a day has go by when somebody doesn't bring it up. McMahon turned 60 in August, but the past few months, there was the first time you really ever heard people talk about what happens to the business after events. It's a scary proposition because for all the positives and the negatives that can be said about the person who is ultimately the greatest promoter in the history of this industry. And at many times a creative genius, you'll find almost nobody who understands wrestling who isn't very concerned about pro wrestling when in the U S when he's no longer in control. And here we are 17 years later and Vince is like a fucking bionic human on some level. Cause he's still going. I mean, I know we're both tickled that he's still going by the way, but hypothetically, would you have ever imagined he would still be doing WWE in 2022? Yes. It's just hard to imagine Absolutely. him not doing it. Right. Yeah. I, I, I can't imagine him not doing it. And, and I'm sure that he will continue to do it probably for the next 25 to 30 years. Um, his mom's 101. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and still going. So, you know, he shows no signs of slowing down at all. And he's a freak of nature and it's, yeah, it's hard to imagine it ever without him. And I don't think that we'll have to imagine it without him for a long, long time. 
<laughs> so you don't buy into the rumor and innuendo. You think this is uh, the Vince McMahon show for the long haul? Yeah. It's just uh, amazing to me. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.